In order to get started with making a set of oars, we first need to know the span between the oar locks. So I installed these oar locks and I used a measurement of one foot from the aft side of the seat to the center of the oar lock. Well, now that I've got the oar locks installed in our little tender, I can now measure the distance between the center of one oar lock to the other. And that measurement is 47 inches. Now with that span, I can now figure out what the length of the oar needs to be. So I'm going to use a formula that was developed by Sean Tenney. Now Sean Tenney has been making oars since 1858, and they still make handcrafted beautiful oars. So that formula is as such. So we take the span and divide it in half, and that measurement then we add two inches. So now what we have is called the inboard loom. And with that measurement, we can now multiply that by 25, and then divide by seven, and then that gives us the length of the oar. So you can see, that gives us a measurement that is just a little over 91 inches. So what we do now is we move to the nearest half foot, and in this case, that would be 90 inches, which would make our oars seven foot, six inches long. So with that information, we can now design an oar that is the proper length. So I have a drawing of the oars that I designed here. So here's the design of the oar that I came up with. Now the first thing you can see is that I have it seven foot six inches long. Now in designing my oars, I looked at a lot of different plans and also images of oars. And I came up with two very critical things that I wanted to include in my design. So the first thing was the handles, and I tapered the handles so that they were wider on the outside than the inside, so that when you had your hand on there and you're rowing, that it would be less apt to slide off. The other thing is that I put a curved part here at the end of the blade, and that is so that if you're pushing off of a dock or something like that, that slight curve in there helps to be able to push it away from the dock. So one of the things I wanted to mention was the difference between the inboard loom length, which we came up with 25 and a half inches, if you'll remember, and the actual distance between the oar lock center to the end of the handle. Now, our inboard loom length was 25 and a half inches. So you can see if we had 25 and a half inches on both sides, those oars are going to bump into each other considering our span is only 47 inches. So ideally what you want is the distance when the oars are completely level, that there's at least three to five inches space between the two handles so that when you're rowing, you don't bump your knuckles or they don't bump together. So I moved the distance of the rowing horn over 22 inches. So that 22 inches will give us plenty of space between those two handles. So the first thing I'm going to do is to make a template of the blade of the oars. I'm just cleaning up the edges of my pattern here a little bit. Now, I used my large bandsaw for this because it has an inch and a quarter blade on it. And with a wider blade, it's easier to, to make gentle curves with it. If it is a smaller blade, you have more control, and I would not have been able to get as smooth a cut. So I'm going to clean this up a little bit, and then um, we can get ready to start laying out our blanks 
for the oars. The wood that I'm using is a spruce that Steve's great-grandfather had planted. Now you may have seen him cut that tree down and that spruce was used for the mast and spars for Victoria and also for the mast of Arabella. So you can see now I can take my pattern and I can lay it out here on the oar that I can then start to get the shape of it. Uh, before I do that, what I want to do is to plane down this surface because you can see that it's raised up a little bit here. So I'm going to plane all this down so it's nice and flat so I can lay that template on there and get it an accurate measurement. And once I do that, then we're going to start concentrating on the shaft of the oar and making it round and tapered to the handle. After I got it nice and smooth, I then found the center line in order to lay the template on there properly. After I got the blade drawn out, I then figured out the taper for the shaft. I only bandsawed out just past the beginning of the loom. The rest of it I'll finish off with my power plane as I'll be able to get a straighter line.
when I've got uh, all of them tapered down to the proper taper that they need to be. Now the next step is to turn these square shafts into round shafts. So the way we do that is first we make it into an octagon and then we trim off those edges to a 16 sided and then eventually sand it and plane it smooth. Now if you want to know more about that, the earlier video where I made the mast and the spar, I demonstrated that more fully. And so to do, to mark it off, I need to use my spar maker's gauge here, which marks off a proportion of seven, 10, seven. And what this does is that it keeps the proportion regardless of how thin or how thick the um, shaft gets. So it simply put this on here and draw it out like so. Now I'll do this on all four sides. What it does is it gives me these two lines that I can now plane down to meet those two and then I end up with an eight sided shaft. Well, now that I've got it an octagon, what I need to do is come back and knock off these high spots, like so with just a hand plane, and start to get it to be round. After I got it close to round, I then used a Macintosh spar finishing machine, which is basically turning a belt inside out that is attached to a drum on an electric drill. If you'd like to know more about this marvelous machine, I talk about it more in the last episode where I show a diagram from Bud Macintosh's book, How to Build a Wooden Boat. Well, now that I've got the main shaft of the oar all rounded off, I need to turn my attention now to the blade. Now you can see on the plans that there is a sort of elongated diamond shape that is a profile of the blade. So it's a little thicker in the center. And then it needs to be turned down to 5 16 on the end and along the edge. So that's what I'm going to do next.
Well, I've got the ore all sanded down now to 220 grit. So the next thing I need to do is to work on this handle. So if you remember from the drawing that I come back six inches and then it tapers smaller here out to larger. So first thing I need to do is to mark off six inches. And what I'm gonna do is take a piece of tape and go all the way around it so that I know that it is All right, so what I have here is uh, three, one and three quarters inches wide, and I want the inside here to be one and a quarter. So if I take a quarter of an inch off each side, which would be a half inch, then I will have that, and then I can taper that out. So what I've done is I've put some tape on my little saw here so that it is a quarter of an inch in. So I'm gonna go around and saw this down to that mark all the way around. Now that I've got that cut all the way around, I'm going to use my draw knife to just slowly carve that down. If you're interested in seeing how I made this draw knife or make one for yourself, that video is available in the tool making playlist on my channel. I'm applying multiple coats of Total Boats Lust Varnish, and as always, I've thinned it 50%. You can see I've taped off the handles of the oars. Now it's important not to varnish the handles for a couple of reasons. One, once it's varnished and the oar gets wet, it can be very slippery. The other thing is that rowing with oars that have varnished handles can cause blisters. Well, that's it for the varnish. I put a total of six coats on each oar. Now, the next thing to do is to install the leather collars. I'm gonna do that in the next episode in part two, because that's all we have time for on this episode. So as always, thanks for watching, and remember, if you're gonna make it, make it beautiful.